go. Logan Mize, your Abzan Company player. Kevin Jones, your blue-red Splinter Twin player. See how things are going to unfold between the two of them here. Abzan Company, a deck there, once Collective Company came out and we lost Birthing Pod, a lot of players kind of went that direction. S have stepped away from it a bit, though, I would say. Well, it, the, the deck now is a bit more of a value deck that happens to have a combo rolled into it, as opposed to the earlier build of Birthing Pod that I would describe as a combo deck that happened to have some value woven into it. You don't have the same level of consistency that you used to do, so you have a lot more fours and three ofs. So you, you try to win some grindy games just with cards like Eternal Winches and Kitchen Finks, and if you happen to assemble the combo, that's great. Well, here's a Collective Company. We will see if this will resolve, and it will. So Logan's going to take a look at the top six cards to see if he can find two creatures to put on the battlefield. Not surprising to come into this match with Mize down a game. Uh, he does not have a lot of interaction game one. K Jones is faster and has more interaction. The donut. The old zero. We don't see that a ton, especially in modern. Although you see it more post-board because Mize has to bring in cards like Path to Exile and Abrupt Decay to interact. Yeah. So uh, I'm not saying that a Collected Company finding zero creatures is likely, but we see more whiffs or more Collected Companies find one creature in the post-board games because there's often fewer creatures left in the deck. Jones having some mana issues here. He just has to pass the turn back. Mize, well, he's got six lands. One of them is a copy of Horizon Canopy. Though no real attacking to be done by either player. Spellskite kind of checking the Deceiver Exarch, and then Deceiver Exarch checking those Eternal Witnesses. For Logan, the hand, not all that spectacular. It looks like just three lands in hand, so he's going to start by cracking Horizon Canopy to draw a card. Looks like Kosali Pride Mage may have been the draw. Fine card to, to interact with. You know, it's some piece of interaction at least. What's going to be interesting for me as we're in game number two here is to see how Kevin did sideboard. It, it looks like he's gone to the Keranoses and is trying to take the controlling route. Now, obviously, this is failing because of the lack of mana, but it looks like he has gone that route. Well, Logan is sideboarding into two copies of Path to Exile and two copies of Abrupt Decay, and his deck's a little bit on the slower side regardless. So executing the combo is a lot more challenging in the post-board games, and Logan's going to let Kevin play for a long time, most likely. It's rare for Mize to win the game on turn four or so. So uh, those those more expensive power cards in the, in the post-board games make some sense. One thing worth noting, if you take a look at Logan's graveyard, some lands down there. Also, two copies of Spellskite have been taken care of already by Kevin, and you saw the Collective Company miss. Here comes Eternal Witness. Kevin will block with his Deceiver Exarch. And I think he might actually have a Pontiff to finish this Exarch off? Uh, yeah, I would imagine Orzhov Pontiff is more about trying to answer Pestermite here, but uh, I'm sure Mize will take it. <laughs> I was about to say, if that's just a, if that attack's just a bluff, that's really risky because Jones has copies of Electrolyze in his deck. So, yeah. Uh, he does have a follow-up here. Ah, okay. Pontiff after board is going to take care of that. Again, not what you'd expect necessarily, but... It'll play. Yeah. Here's Pastor Mike. Looks like it'll be untapping a land there for Kevin. And now he'll just go back to his turn. See if he can find some Lancer. I think that's really the only piece of the puzzle he's missing. Well, uh, he's got Twin in, in hand. No land number four, though. It looks like he just picked it up. But he can't get the Spell Scout off the table just yet. So... That's the path. Yeah, he's got to worry about the Spell Sky and the Kosali Pride Mage blowing up the Splinter Twin, too. Yep. He's got to get through quite a bit of resistance here. Now, Kevin does have some ways to go about doing it. You see the Snapcaster Mage, that can flash back Roast. Roast can take care of the Spell Sky, or it can take care of the Kosali Pride Mage. It looks like it's headed towards Spell Sky. So Spell Sky number three down. Pestermite coming in the air. I guess Mize is actually kind of low. Yeah, that's the other option here that is Kevin has uh, some red cards in hand. If he's got some bolts here, L Mize has fallen down to eight off that attack. He could just race. Pretty important draw step here for Logan. He needs a card like Gavney Township. Maybe there's a Razor Verge Thick. It doesn't look thrilled to be playing that land for the turn. Remember, this is the play to stay group. Kevin Jones is 0-1 right now. Logan Mize is 1-0. The bottom of both pod C and D 
Whoever's in last place after our three rounds are played, they're both eliminated, and then we'll have two elimination rounds. Kwasali Pride Mage. Going to be blocked here by Kevin. And and Mize with some weird body language, looked a little frustrated, and then sent in the Pride Mage. I wouldn't be surprised if he top decks something to answer the combo and is trying to rope Jones in. Because that attack looks a little weird. And that's a shoulder shrug. Yeah, an abrupt decay. Yeah, you read it from here. My Mize did a little bit of Hollywooding there. I wasn't I wasn't buying that he was that frustrated and then offering up the Pride Mage. Wow, and now Gavney Township off the top as well, and all of a sudden it's a two turn clock. And here he comes. Three, six, seven, eight. Jones is down to three. And Kevin will draw a card. It's an island. That'll buy him time. Because now he can play Cryptic Command. But he's in some real trouble here. Yeah, Cryptic Command is, is fine. It's a turn, but I'm not sure what Kevin can do with a turn at this point. Well, I will say Snapcaster Mage is a great draw here for him. He can flash back the Anger. Yeah, that's a huge draw. Lightning Bolt looks like it's going to go after Eternal Witness. And it will. And then Kevin will just have to pass the turn back. Mize will draw. And Cryptic Command is going to tap these creatures before they even get to attack. It'll be tap and draw. Logan acknowledging that pretty quickly. Logan basically needs one more turn. If he can activate the Gavinia Township and then activate it again, his creatures are four toughness and then Anger of the Gods can't pull Jones out. But there is a window here for Snapcaster Mage to answer the board. Logan will just pass the turn back. Kevin did pick up a copy of Lightning Bolt off that Cryptic Command draw card. So Kevin's almost out of the situation as well. What's he draw? Didn't get a great look at it. But he's reaching for mana very quickly. A copy of Engineered Explosives. Oh, that'll play too. Yes, it will. This will be an EE for three. That'll clear things up real nice. Pass the turn back. Township activation. Now, do you do it now or do you wait? He's going to do it now. That'll work just fine. There go those creatures. Kevin Jones back into this game. And if Logan doesn't have something to do here, Kevin could untap, play Karanos, and try to stabilize that way. That's a slightly risky activation there because Mize could have even Mind Sensor as the last card in his hand. That would be bad news. And then he would play it, untap, township, and win. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer to wait, but it doesn't look like Mize has anything to punish him here. For Logan now, it looks like a Voice of Resurgence may be on the way. The tough part here is that Kevin has to just answer everything for the rest of the game. His hand's very good. If Mize ever gives him some breathing space and Jones can get Karanos into play, that might be enough to carry it, but that's going to be tough. There's Verdant Catacombs. Pass the turn back. Jones will draw. Snapcaster Mage. Another huge one. Yeah. I'm curious how he should go about using it. And the reason I say that is because he has a copy of Splinter Twin in his hand, <laughs> and Splinter Twin on Snapcaster Mage is very real right now. Well, he doesn't have enough mana to do it right now. Further down the road. The, the problem here is, l let's say he goes Snapcaster, Bolt the Voice, mm -hmm. and passes. Then Mize gets to use Gavin Township, untap, and threatens lethal on the spot. I think Jones's route here might be Snapcaster, Anger the Gods, and hope that Logan just bricks off for one turn. Well, there's Snapcaster, Anger the Gods. Because if, if Jones gets a turn to play Karanos, he can really turn the game around here. But I don't know if he can battle through the Voice of Resurgence token over the course of the two turns and keep the Snapcaster in play. So... Yeah, now Jones is just crossing the fingers and hoping here that Logan misses for one turn. If he does that, Jones has a great opportunity to take over this game with Karanos. Well, I will say this. There are not a lot of misses in Logan's deck right now. Any, any creature's a problem. Every creature's good. Yeah. But if he misses, 
Jones can take over the game. And most spells are pretty good. Court of Calling, Clinton Company. And Logan reaching for some mana here. Jones still with a bolt in his hand, so he can answer a lot of the threats that Logan can pull off the top. And if Jones can pair a bolt with land number six for Karanos, that's also a very good route. Yep. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on here. Eternal Witness, perhaps? That would be very bad for Kevin. That would be that would be very not good. Four copies in the list. Court of Calling. That's actually one of the things I've always liked about Logan's particular build of this deck is he plays so many copies of that card. Yeah. He's on the full four on top of his copies of Collected Company. So here's Court of Calling. What's the weapon of choice here for Logan? I think it might just be Witness. Start a Witness chain. Yeah, you can Witness, get back Witness, and then that forces Kevin to answer these two threats plus whatever comes on the backup. With Jones at three, each of these Eternal Witnesses represents lethal because of the Gavney Township in play. So this is asking a lot for Kevin to answer. Island the draw. He's just never going to get the opportunity to actually Karanos him. Yeah, that was He needed that one turn. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to get it. He'll play an island, pass the turn back. Mize will draw. I think he may have picked up a copy of Collector Company now. Here come the attackers. And Logan says, I'll present lethal. It's on you to do something about it. There's Lightning Bolt on Eternal Witness. A and Kevin is trying to induce Logan to making a mistake here. Or maybe just not attacking over lethal. It, it, one could argue that that's not a mistake. Well, uh, you know, it, it is risky here because I, I suppose if Jones says no blocks, then it's fairly safe for Logan to go for the kill because Jones would have to have a perfect hand to get out from this. Mm -hmm. He needs another removal spell and then to be able to punish Mize on the way back. I think just knocking Kevin down 2-1 and saying go seems riskier to me than going for the kill. Well, what I like about Logan just knocking him down to 1 and say go is that Kevin has to make a move then, and I have a court of calling that can search for red cap. Sure, assuming the red cap's still in the deck. Yeah, it's still in the deck. We saw, we saw assuming it wasn't his draw step this turn, it's still in the deck. Well, Logan just trying to figure out if he can go for it here. He's going to try it, and that's going to do it. Logan Mice is going to win game number two here over Kevin Jones. Abzan Company and Blue Red Twin getting ready here for game number three. And Logan's body language certainly tricked Kevin there on that one turn of the yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, the, the frustrated shrug and then the, the wide attack involving the Pride Mage was definitely to rope Jones in to trade off with the Pride Mage and go for the kill. There were still a lot of draw steps that needed to cooperate there for Mize, but he gave himself the best chance by... Uh, inducing that play out of Jones. Not a bad play there from Logan. As we're going to get ready to take a look at the sideboards here for both players, get an idea of what each of them are working with here. Now, of course, whenever you take a look at a twin sideboard, it, it's so tough, I think, to sideboard with this deck. You've got two Engineer Explosives, a Spell Sky, two Blood Moons, two Ancient Grudge, and a Gate, a P.A. Kieran Nalar, two copies of Karanos Goddess Storms. So you know at least one's in there, two Anger of the Gods of Rose, and a Jace Architect of Thought. You can sideboard out some of the combo. You can leave it all in. What do you do? Well, I think the Rose, the Anger of the Gods, and the Engineer Explosives are, are all very good here. I, I'm not personally a big fan of Karanos in the matchup because I, I think that Logan can play that sort of game as well as Jones can. And you, and you see when Mize is applying pressure, there's not even a window really for Jones to get Karanos into play. I would assume, though, if he had it uh, in his deck while he's on the draw, on the play, he would still want it. On the other side of things here for Logan, even Mind Sensor, Burnington, Forge Tender, or as off Taunt if we saw along with Pride Mage. There's a Scavenging Ooze as well over there. Four copies of Voice Resurgence, Denied a lot of Rhetoric, two Abrupt Decay, two Path Exiles, and a Linvala Keeper of Silence. He's got a lot of stuff against Twin. He does indeed. The, the Pride Mage and the Scavenging Ooze being good against all the graveyard stuff, the removal spells and Abrupt Decay and Path to Exile. I believe we saw the Linvala as he was going through his deck, which makes sense. And the four copies of Voice of Resurgence, I imagine, just come in against any sort of counters and removal style matchup. 
Well, those are the options there for both players as they get ready here for game number three. A lot of time left in the match, even though it can be a pretty complicated one and two pretty slow decks at times. So they both have combos woven into them. So we'll see how things do play out here as Kevin Jones will be on the play here for game number three. In the meantime, we're going to talk about the season one schedule of the SCG Tour next year. It started in Las Vegas where Brian Brondewin, congratulations to him, finally getting that finally. Open Series win. Two-time Grand Prix champion. Yeah. Had no open wins to his name which is just an odd statistic, but got it done last weekend. Congratulations. When we roll into the next year, we, we start off with two modern events in Cincinnati and Charlotte, then two standard events in Atlanta and Columbus. After that, the regional championship, we announced the venue. So go.starcitygames.com slash regionals. Find the regional championship closest to you, modern in Louisville, legacy in Philadelphia. After that, we have a standard open event in Indianapolis, a standard open in Baltimore, and then the season one invitational Columbus, Ohio, April 15th through the 17th, standard and modern as the invitational formats. Now, of course, for any opens that you do enter during season one of the SCG Tour, we've got our Kitchen Links play mat just hanging out with the milk, making a mess. Pretty simple to get. You enter the open, you get one of these. So easy. <laughs> they, are, they are making a mess, and you get it for free. Just sign up. Not limited to the first X people who register. Don't mail it to you after the fact. We give you a voucher. Come to the stage. Get your play mat. And this is something that people who don't even play Magic will like, as the Tassiper play mat proved from 2015. And in case you were wondering, I'm going to make sure that you don't get one. I know. Well, that's, that will just keep Star City Games' streak alive. Of yeah. <laughs> never giving me a play mat. I know it's very costly. For them to give me one of them. That's, that, it, correct, So it I is. understand why that's the policy. They are for our paying customers, Patrick. You can be one of those, too. I pay with time. Come on. <laughs> Do Don't you? say I'm not paying. Do you? I pay with time. And our backup match <laughs> that we were going to go to, Alex Bastecki walking out of the future match area, a winner with Nia Company. He's 2-0 with the deck. He just took down Hunter Nance, who was playing Merfolk. So congratulations to Bastecki, who is bouncing back now. Yep. Definitely a rocky start in Legacy, but yeah. has been rattling off some wins in the modern round. A surprising deck choice, not one that we see a ton. Mm -hmm. But Nia Company started to put a pedigree together. Well, I had to, you had to go back to the, the Grand Prix in Miami. We saw Matt Sperling and Paul Rietzel play that deck uh, to a very good finish. I believe Paul missing the top eight on tiebreakers. And you got to see that it was a deck that could get some very explosive openings. You have Wild Nacatl and Bolts and removal spells and exhaustive effects. So you get some of those openings. But because of cards like Loxodon Smiter, Nile Reliquary, Collected Company, you aren't beat if the game goes past turn three. And we saw that with Bistecki when he won his match last round against Sandy Jessup. Those two players played a very long match. Bistecki was able to get the job done. He's 2-0 now in group play. And I watched Danny's match on camera with Bistecki last round. And I imagine something similar happened with Hunter this round. There's just a lot of numbers in that deck. The size of the creatures relative to mana, if you're backing them with removal, a lot of damage-based removal decks, a lot of tribal creature decks are not going to be able to compete with threats like Loxon Spire and Nether Reliquary. Well, these players will get ready. One of our last matches here. And we'll learn a little bit more about Logan Mize, the Florida player, 26 years old from Orlando, and got a bid and an at-large point leader. Eight open series top eights. We don't see him a ton because he's isolated down there in Orlando, but when we do, the conversion rate is pretty good. You take a look at his record for 2015. Matthias Hun a little fell a little bit short with all of his data mining. He did a great job, obviously. Yep. But I would like to see the statistics of opens entered versus number of top eights, what your conversion rate is. Because I would guess Logan is, if not the top, very close to it. He, he's consistently in the top eight of the events that he does show up to. Lifetime record versus the field, 8-11 and 11 for Logan. Of course, when you're playing in large tournaments like Opens, it's hard to play against the players that will be playing at the Players' Championship. You're not going to run into them every time, but you do see the record that he's had against the field. So game number three about to be underway. Looks like this might be our last one of the round. Twin versus Company. Twin, of course, we see a ton of, and I don't think that's going to change very much in Modern. I was on Company. Maybe it's missing a piece. Who knows? Well, it's the type of deck that's likely to scale up in power as time goes on because every set is going to have two and three mana utility creatures, and there's just a good chance that one of them fits into the main deck or the sideboard. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty motley crew of creatures over here, and a lot of them are in the deck or in the sideboard because of the way that they line up with other cards in the deck, so you never know what the random creature is that's going to end up going into this thing. Eilon of Rhetoric, Linvala. You're just hanging out. Orzhov Pontiff. Don't, seer. I don't think Kevin expected that one 
I definitely did not expect yeah. that. Wonder if you ask Logan about it. So, yeah, I, I have two power creatures with exalted cre creatures, and they feel safe to blocking with their Deceiver Exarch all the time. I would imagine it's mostly for answering Pester Might. And when you have Cord in your deck, you can get an instant speed. Yep. So, but I'm sure Logan will also take the Deceiver Exarch randomly dying there as well. Hey, getting one of those off the battlefield is always nice. Yeah, this is a one four against a bunch of two ones. I mean, <laughs> that Deceiver Exarch was was powerful even without the combo being involved. Both players going to keep their opener. It's a mountain start here for Jones. For Mize, he'll draw. You can see a little, you know, jutting of the lower lip there for Mize. The, the mountain is a weird opening. Typically, you want to start on a fetch land or a tap land or some sort of serum vision style effect. Leading with the mountain sort of suggests that there could be something wrong with the hand. My there's mistake. Oh, there's an island. No, he's, he's okay. He's fine. Yeah, I mean, perhaps just trying to leave a lightning bolt to kill a man accelerant. Yep. Yeah. Vernon Catacomb is going to bring Logan down to 19 as he wants to figure out what land he's going to search up. It's not quite the puzzle that Standard is, but it's pretty close. It, it's weird because even though Twin is a combo deck and when it goes off, it, it goes off for infinite. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of games that it wins, almost like what we saw in game number two, where the life total does matter a lot, where it ends up damage racing with pester mites and trying to contain the board by removal spells and bolts and so forth. So uh, managing your life total does matter, even though Mize is playing against an infinite combo deck. We're going to head over to Logan's second turn now. Searched up an overgrown tomb with that Verdant Catacombs. And now there's a basic forest, and here's Wall of Roots. Pass the turn back over to Jones. Jones will draw a card. There's a Sulphur Falls. Wall of Roots, one of my favorite cards in Magic history. I like when it can make mana in between turns. <laughs> a different time for the rule set. Yes. Deceiver Exarch. Going to come down here on Logan's upkeep to tap that Verdant Cat. Excuse me, tap that Overgrown Tomb. The flavor on the card is great. Yes. It's wall of Roots. Mm -hmm. Powerful, but not obnoxiously so. True. You go into a variety of strategies. Great with Court of Calling. Great with Treywind Rider. <laughs> it slices and dices. Does it all. Horizon Canopy and simply a passing of the turn. Kevin will take a draw step here. Picked up a copy of Lightning Bolt. If he has Splinter Twin right now, would he go for it? He's got to be worried about Path to Exile. Got to be worried about a lot of stuff. But Kevin Jones does like to go for it. He's just going to pass the turn back. Ah. No guts. Probably bad to go for it, but, you know. It's, I wouldn't feel great about going for it here. But that's also something that Logan wants to do, right? He wants to represent making it look bad to go for it. Yep. Here's a chord for one. For what it's worth, Kevin's got a pretty reactive hand. Electrolyze a couple copies of Bolt. Yeah, this, he can play kind of a longer controlling and removal game, and if Logan ever puts the shields down, then perhaps he'll go for it. So it will be a court for one. Logan have to take, has to take one there from the Horizon Canopy, so he'll fall down to 18. Don't think time will become a factor for these players as we're about to work ourselves under 15 minutes. There's Viscerous here. This feels like a pretty good window for Jones to land Electrolyze. He can split the damage to Viscerous here and to Logan, so he can still draw the card even if Sacrifice happens. And I, I don't want Logan to go into his turn with all his mana available, ready to collect a company or cord at a moment's notice. I see. How about one and one? And then bolt to finish off the wall. Even better. Let me dial that up. Viscerous here will sacrifice itself to scry. Top card to the bottom. Electrolyze is done resolving. Jones will draw a card. And now lightning bolt will take care of wall roots. I, I, I like this exchange. Yes, this is a great turn for Kevin. Yeah. 
the the thing about playing against twin is you need to get the work done up front the minute they're ahead on the board and you're pinned on mana, suddenly it's very dangerous for you to advance your board because you can just die out of nowhere. When you have stuff going on, it's a lot easier to leave up a mana for Path to Exile or two mana for Abrupt Decay. So when the game gets to this spot, you know, now Logan's got to be very concerned about tapping low because Kevin might just go for the kill. When he's got mana in play, when he can represent Quarter, quarter Calling or Collective Company, it's much riskier for, for Jones to do anything. But now Logan's got to get something into play. Well, Logan does have a fourth land there in the Windswept Heath. Now there's a Voice of Resurgence. There is the Heath and pass the turn back. And what I think Logan has done a really nice job of this game is representing Path Exile and Abrupt Decay. Yeah, he, he does kind of want to show the possibility of Abrupt Decay here because Jones has Dispels in, this, in his deck. So if he taps down to one mana and Jones has fifth land Dispel Twin, he knows he's in the clear. As long as there's Abrupt Decay mana up, it's much more complicated for Jones to try to go for the kill. Here's a Serum Visions for Kevin. He'll draw a card. And now Scry 2. Splinter Twin among those cards. Snapcaster Mage as well. Let's put the difference one in one. Serum Vision is unresolving. Is Kevin maybe interested in Anger of the Gods? No, that answers that question. Typically, you look to get more with Anger of the Gods, but again, I, I like that Kevin is trying to keep the board clear. And I, I think that it, it, it's possible that Jones's hand wants to play instant speed so badly, and he has a Snapcaster Mage, so if, if the going gets tough, he can just flash it right back. Uh, but I think this is more of a desire to be able to play his whole hand at instant speed. Now, what's great about this, too, is with the way that Logan is playing this game, he doesn't have Path or Decay. Yeah. But he's just trying to rep it so hard, and I think he's doing a nice job of it. And I think Kevin might be trying to take the position here of it's going to be very hard for Logan to meaningfully advance his board and also leave up removal mana. So as long as the game kind of looks like this, it, it, it's tough for Logan to do anything too threatening. Logan will sacrifice the Windswept Heath. See what land he wants to search up here. See the Court of Calling, the Anafenza in hand as well. But it'll be Godless Shrine, apparently. Though Logan's got a lot to think about here. That's why you see this fetch taking a little while. He's got a lot of demand on his mana. He may be needing to chain together multiple spells in the same turn. There's the consideration of what happens if I need to break the Horizon Canopy to look for help. Mm -hmm. So these are not simple decisions. Over to Logan. Horizon Canopy the draw. Decisions, decisions here from Mize. And you can see the bind that Mize is in. You know, he's got to figure out what's the best way for me to get something into play, because I need to get something into play, while still leaving up enough mana that Jones respects the possibility of a kill spell. Mm -hmm. Remember, these two players are in the play-to-stay groups. So winning here, very, very important. Temple Garden, just a passing of the turn here for Logan. So now he's representing a whole bunch of different things. Collected Company, Court of Calling, different removal spells. Yep. Here comes the Seaver Exarch. Here's Cord. 
this will be for two. Spell Sky's attractive. He has so many of those after sideboard, too. It does represent some protection against the combo. Meaning Logan can be a little bit more aggressive about tapping out and trying to advance his board. Yep. There's a lightning bolt to finish it off. Oh, this might be all before blocks. Wow. So back Logan's way we go. I think that I might have had a preference for Jones to just pass the turn there. Okay. Because it's possible that Logan will feel safe with the spell sky and tap very low. Then you can get rid of the spell sky and try to go for the kill. And maybe trap him a little bit. As it stands, Mize knows, okay, well, now this is a combo and I need to either need to leave up removal mana or represent that I have it. It also feel like it also feels like, and it looks like Path to Exile was the draw there. It, it feels like Kevin's just trying to damage race a little bit, which is not a horrible strategy. You know, Logan is trying to leave up a bunch of mana to represent removal spells, Re regardless of whether or not he has them. Uh, it does slow the game down. It does mean that Jones has opportunities to get in some points here and some points there. And Jones's deck is definitely capable of burning out with cards like Pestermite, the various bolts that are floating around. So, uh, I definitely understand prioritizing getting in the shots, but. I think there I would have gone for, try to go for a bit more of a trap. Oh, well, here's the Kitchen Finks. That'll be a trigger. Logan will gain some life. And now Kevin's going to sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. That's a copy of Steam Vents. And we'll be heading back Jones's way in just a moment. Of course, whenever you're playing against Twin, you're very cognizant of the combo that can take place. And whenever you, whenever you are playing with Twin, you're always trying to force it through. Always trying to get your opponent to make a misstep. Very challenging deck to play against. Yeah. And to play with. Roast the draw. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jones could have potentially ended this game several turns ago if he crossed his fingers and went for it. Yeah. Last game he crossed his fingers and went for it, and Mize had the answer. It's a very stressful deck to play with and against. Jones checking the sideboard here real quick as he picked up a copy of Roast for the turn. Remember, with those lands for Kevin, he does have a copy of Desolate Lighthouse. So if he'd like to try to improve his draws, that's an option, though he does have three spells in hand. It's a tough spot here for Jones because, you know, he was kind of on this damage race plan. That's gotten a lot worse in the face of Kitchen Fangs. He's respected the possibility of a removal spell for several turns now and hasn't gone for Splinter Twin, but it's not looking like it's possible for him to win the game any other way. It's, it is conceivable that he will go for Twin here on essentially the first turn where it was no good. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is, this is the one time that he's going to go for it. Where it's no good. And it's been good for, what, two, three turns now? But a lot of credit goes to, to Logan here for playing the game in such a fashion to represent a lot of mana. Yep. And I think that Jones just felt like his hand was a little bit too awkward. Uh, to improve it, he would have to sit around and, and lighthouse for a while. And it's not even clear he can ever beat Abrupt Decay. So at that point, he's only playing against Pat to Exile. And again, Logan set the game up to get to this kind of point. Time to see what comes next here for Mize. Township, Canopy, and Anafenza. Anafenza will be the play. And now here's an attack with Kitchen Finks. No bolstering to be done just yet. There's Horizon Canopy. And now we're going to go back Kevin Jones's way. Logan has done such a nice job to get himself to this position. Serum Vision's the draw. Not a bad place to start if you're Kevin. Looks like he's going to go to Roast, however. And that'll do just fine on Anafenza. Is the plan of damage racing still a good one? Well, it's all he can do right now with the Snapcaster Mage, but I, I think realistically... Jones is going to have to win through the combo. 
Well, let's put the difference there on the scry. Serum vision's done resolving. If he went for it last time, if he can put it together, you know, he's got one piece in the hand of the X-Arc, yep. I think he'll he'll try again. I mean, it, waiting is not going to be very helpful for him. That doesn't sound ideal. Horizon can't be going to draw a card. Might as well untap Kitchen Finks along with those lands. Take a draw step for the turn. And an attack for three is going to bring Jones down to 13. There's a township past the turn back. Well, Kevin Jones, what do you think of Logan Mize's hand? Now, one thing that Kevin can do here is tap down a green source. That's somewhat attractive because that cuts off quarter calling. Yep. And if I'm Kevin Jones, I've got some interest in that. But it looks like he went with Township instead, and I, I don't like that one. I think he was trying to induce the action. There's no way Logan is going to do anything with the Township. Yep. Although I don't know if there's anything productive where jo where Mize can cord for two in this spot, so maybe it's safe. Spellskite. Oh, yeah, you're right. Spellskite. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And he has, he has two more of those in his main deck, and Kevin knows how many he's playing. Well, this time not going for it was correct. There's Abrupt Decay. And I think Logan would prepare, would prefer there to just kind of sit back and race and hang back on the Abrupt Decay to try to trap the combo. But the damage race is not great for him now. He, he's down, and if he's racing 3-3, three to three, he's got to be worried about Bolts and Pestermites finishing the game off. We're almost already two minutes here. Remember, in a game like this, we do work our way into sudden death, potentially. And sudden death is after the five turns, whoever has the higher life total wins. Players knew that coming into the tournament. For some, it influenced their deck preparation and deck selection. For some, it's influenced the way they've played the games. Abrupt Decay will be returned here. There's a Swamp. Here comes an activation of Desolate Lighthouse. Scalding Tarn will bite the dust. Jones will draw. A misty rainforest, the draw step. Getting harder and harder for Jones to work through this, though. Yeah. Here comes Snap. Witness can't trade fast enough. Yeah, Mize knows he's a pretty big favorite from this spot. Not the easiest card for Logan to get off, uh, for Jones rather to get off the table, and that thinks. Though it looks like Hanger of the Gods will get it done. Yep. We've seen that line of play from Kevin before. He's got to lose the Snapcaster Mage to do it, but thinks is done. The thing is that Logan is drawing so big right now Oof. because every creature is good. And Eclectic Company is pretty good as well. We're under a minute in the match. Logan with Spellskite and Pontiff, a motley crew. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's not, not the greatest set of creatures here, though it is more protection against the combo, and really any two attacking creatures are fine with Gavney Township in play. There's Rose to take care of Spellskite. That'll bite the dust. Players accelerating their pace of play a little bit here. Kosali Pride Mage. That that draw is is ideal there. Yeah. It's another threat on the on the battlefield. It's another point of damage this turn and allows Logan to leave up the mana necessary to activate Gavany Township. Lighthouse activation. There goes Misty Rainforest. We're going back to Kevin Jones. He's picked up a copy of Deceiver Exarch, but he knows his opponent has a copy of Abrupt Decay in hand. Kevin will be turn zero. Logan's got one, three, and five. And Kevin is the lower of the two. Snapcaster Mage in response to this township activation. It'll be Electrolyze. And it's kind of funny to say, but maybe he's supposed to be snapcasting bolts now. Well, I, I don't. He he kind of needs to get the Prime Mage off the table just to manage the damage race, and he still leaves the Bolt in his graveyard. 
for other Snapcasters. Okay. I mean, we're, we're, we're five turns away from sudden death deciding the game. We might not get to that far if he's not managing the board. It's very true. Because Logan can always just abrupt the, case, the Snapcaster and hit for a bunch. Very true. Very true. So now a new wrinkle has been thrown into this game. Where we might see something strange like Logan aggressively use Abrupt Decay to clear the path for a Pontiff hit. Well, turn two and turn four for Jones is enough to combo out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty risky to Abrupt Decay here. Oh, he's reaching. Look at the way he separated his mana. Well, he, he, it's pretty face up what he wants to be doing. He wants to be activating Township and leaving up Abrupt Decay. There's a block. There's the Pontiff getting larger. Pass the turn back. We're going to Jones. It's turn number two here for Kevin. He'll draw a card. Serum Visions. Let's see where this gets him. Looks like it may have been a copy of Cryptic Command. Now he'll scry two. Dispel, but that doesn't help against Abrupt Decay. Kevin left both on top with the scry. There's a scalding turn. He'll pass the turn back over to Mize. Mize ahead in life totals right now 9-8. It's turn number three of extra turns. It's an attack. Jones will fall to five. You see Jones's hand. No Exarch over there. Would that mean maybe no way to win? For Mize, ooh, Eternal Witness is a big draw. Witness for Finks increases the clock. Yep. Puts more separation in the life totals. Able to leave Decay up as well. Could get back Path, Spell Skite, Cord. A lot of good options. Yeah, there really are. Pride Mage, too. Excuse me. The Finks was exiled because of Anger. But sure. there's still a ton of good options down there. I don't even know if he'd want to go maybe to Anafenza territory, but Cord does make a little bit of sense. For Jones, we're about to go to turn number four. Looks like he's going to activate the Lighthouse. Time to draw and discard. Snapcaster Mage is what he's found. Misty Rainforest is going to bite the dust. Does he somehow have a way here? It's not turn four just yet, but turn four is Kevin Jones' last turn of the game. Well, it's got to be survive combat and find a way probably to just bolt Logan out of the game. Yeah. I don't think that he's going to be able to damage race. I don't think he went through the combo because of Abrupt Decay. So I think he's got to look at some line of play that allows him to cryptic command Logan's next set of attacks and then find a way to burn out. I don't really see it happening another way. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, and I don't even know if that's a line of play that's available to him right now. That's the issue. He's going to sacrifice the fetch lane, go down to at least four, potentially a little bit less. Well, at four to nine, uh, assuming he doesn't take another point of damage, two bolts is still, still covered. Him. Yes, it is. So... Not inconceivable, but he's going to need to have uh, things cooperate very specifically for him. Now we go to turn four. Kevin will draw. An island does not appear to be very helpful. That said, there are redraws available here. If he does have Cryptic Command in hand, there are some things available. But it does not appear Cryptic is even in the grip right now. It's Snapcaster to Spell, Splinter Twin, and an Island. So if he has eight lands in play, he can conceivably Lighthouse for Cryptic. The problem now is both of these threats are lethal. Yeah. Here's a Township activation. And remember, that was Kevin's last turn. He gets nothing else. 
here's Snapcaster Mage. This is a Lightning Bolt. Gonna target Pontiff. Pontiff with the rarely used Haunt mechanic. Widely celebrated, very intuitive. Yes. Dripping with sarcasm. Turn five. It's a fetch land. I think you're going to see Logan moving to combat here and abrupt to K before blocks. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't, the thing, he doesn't do even that. need to do that. There are no sure. turn, there are no more turns left in the in the game. So sudden death is going to take care of it, and Logan Mize is going to win this match here against Kevin Jones. Two games to one. If there's more time there. I still think that Logan is pretty far ahead in that situation. I, I think Logan can just go for the kill there in a normal set of circumstances, yeah. but no, no real reason to uh, with the time about to expire. So Logan Mize does win this match two games to one. Sudden Death, sudden death excuse me, does play a role in things just a touch there. For Mize, he's going to go to 2-0 in his group. For Kevin Jones, he falls down to 0-2.